Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 10. When they're moving that quickly, it's telling me that there is a market for that type of home. The average price of a home in West Fargo is $359,000, according to one local realtor. While not everyone agrees on that figure, they can agree that for a lot of people, that price point is out of range. Valley News Team's Veronica Marshall looks into what might be driving home prices so high and why some say it should not stop you from buying a new home. There's a very charming old or small town in West Fargo surrounded by big beautiful new homes. That small town feel could come with big city prices. The average price for a home in West Fargo is $359,000. Between three dollars and $400,000 homes in, in West Fargo, there's about 17 listings right now. Experts say the higher home prices could be the result of newer homes going up to accommodate the city's growth. West Fargo, um, up until about 20 years ago, was a pretty small town that had just exponential growth really, really quickly. There's more new construction that are selling in West Fargo versus the amount of existing homes that are selling in Fargo. 21.3% of what's listed currently is new construction for our area. Experts say these homes are on the market for about 83 days, which means there is a market for them. But those price points can be tough for lower income families or first time home buyers. And there's people that are in um, low income jobs. Uh, you know, they're not going to be able to afford those that are in that, that range. It's a little harder for the first time home buyers getting their feet wet. This West Fargo home is $745,000, but realtors say don't let price tags like these stop you from looking for a new home. I always say, you know, get, get in the house that you can afford now, build some equity, and then three, four years down the road, you can upgrade and get into the house that you really want. And for the first time in a long time, the market is helping families out. If you have a home under $200,000, it's a good time to sell that home because you're going to get good money for your home and it's a good time to buy if you're going to buy in the $300,000 range because the homes tend to set a little bit longer therefore you're going to get a little better price. Veronica Marshall, Valley News Live. We did check websites like Zillow and Realtor.com who listed the median price for a home in West Fargo around $250,000. A plus for potential home buyers, interest rates. Experts say while they're crept up over the last few years, they're still at about four and a half percent. Here's a follow-up to a story we brought to you over the weekend. One man claimed the Fargo Baymont Inn and Suites had unacceptable conditions. He complained that he was switched to four different rooms because of problems like no air conditioning, dirty rooms, and even mold. Today we spoke with the manager of the Baymonts who walked us through the hotel. They said the man was just looking for a free stay. They claim the issues the man complained about do not exist. I know our reviews aren't that great online, and that's something that I have an entirely new management team working to change. So we did everything we could to accommodate the hunters, and nothing we did was going to please them. When our team was walked through the hotel and into two of the four rooms that the man stayed in, aside from a couple stains on the carpet, we found nothing. The temperature is dropping quickly, definitely cooling off out there. Hutch, cool enough for a jacket maybe tomorrow morning, or do we need to tough it out? Well, we certainly can tough it out, but some 50s are expected in a few spots as we go through the overnight, even some 40s. Right now, 77 in Minneapolis, the hot spot. It is 61 in Fargo. There is a lonely sprinkle working its way through the Breckenridge Wapiton area right now as it pushes to the east into Wilkin County and onward towards Ottertail County. That's about the lone activity we'll see, minus the chance for some patchy fog developing from the Red River Valley, mainly into Minnesota. Coming up, we'll have details on a warming trend that's going to take hold as we close out our work week. Warming trend sounds good, thanks. You bet. Minnesota voters went to the polls for today's primary election to determine which DFL and Republican candidates for governor will face off in the general election this November. Mark Dayton decided not to run again. For the Democrats, with more than a third of the votes counted, Tim Walls leads over Aaron Murphy and Lori Swanson is in third. On the Republican side, former Governor Tim Pawlenty trails Jeff Johnson. Johnson with 53 percent, Pawlenty at 44. 
Among Minnesota Democrats, there's only one choice for U.S. Senate. That's incumbent Amy Klobuchar with 95 percent. There's a similar situation among Republicans. Their candidate for U.S. Senate is clear, Jim Newberger with 72 percent. And in Clay County, the race to replace longtime Sheriff Bill Burquist. The top two vote getters move on with 54 of 58 precincts reporting. It's Scott Steffes and Mark Emting leading. And for all of the results from today's Minnesota primary, go to our website at valleynewslive.com. We'll have a live report later in this broadcast from one of the key races coming up with Peter Zampa. That's in just a few minutes. Three employees of the Dollar Tree in South Fargo are speaking out. They tell us the conditions they have been working in are unbearable. They tell us the air conditioning is broken and say it's been that way all summer. They add no one is fixing it and they've talked to management and filed a complaint with OSHA. They like working there, but by speaking out, they're afraid they'll lose their jobs. The employees say one of their fellow co-workers needed medical attention for a possible heat stroke. We about died yesterday. We were in there for eight hours. It happens every summer. This happens. This is just the worst summer because it's been so hot. And they aren't the only ones with these complaints. We even received some calls from customers who noticed the heat when they were shopping. We reached out to the corporate Dollar Tree office and they tell us they are aware of the situation and are in the process of resolving the issue as soon as possible. Microchipping your pet is supposed to make it easier for you to find it if it's lost or stolen. Valley News Team's Katie Opperly talks to a local shelter about the effectiveness of microchipping and how exactly it works. There are a lot of pets lost all the time. Um, there's actually Facebook pages dedicated to the Fargo-Moorhead area for lost and found pets. Heather Clyde says these lost animals often end up in their care at Homeward Animal Shelter. That's why they offer clinics to microchip animals. What it has on it is a barcode, and that barcode is linked with the owner's information in a database. One pet owner says they have lost a dog in the past, and now every animal they own has a microchip just in case. It does guarantee that if your pet becomes lost, as long as your information is up to date and the pet is turned in, to a shelter or vet clinic, we can reunite you with your pet. Heather says that the microchip can be used anywhere in the world that they have a scanner. She says the pound, shelter, and clinics in the FM area all have microchip scanners. Even just here locally, if she gets, you know, if I have her out in the front yard and she runs off and I don't know where she's at, well, then somebody will find her. So Homeward and the Pound highly recommend microchips for peace of mind. They get out so fast and my biggest fear would be that someone would take a cute little pup in like him and think, oh, it's just a stray dog. The type of microchip used at the shelter does not have any additional fees, but some others may to keep them active or change owner information. It is a problem. There's lots of animals that go through the pound system in our area each year and microchips will hopefully help those animals that do end up there inadvertently get back to their owners. In Fargo, Katie Offerly, Valley News Live. Homeward Animal Shelter does offer microchip clinics periodically. For more information on those clinics and local microchipping in general, go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. A recreational pot measure will be on the North Dakota ballot in November. It includes language that seeks to seal prior records of anyone convicted of a nonviolent marijuana related crime, whether the previous crime was possession or distribution of marijuana. The proposed measure would require courts to automatically clear or seal prior convictions within 30 days. I don't think it's a bad thing if individuals have a mechanism to get that stuff off their record as long as they've been law-abiding for X amount of time and it's not an ongoing issue. If the North Dakota Recreational Marijuana Measure passes, it would be placed into the North Dakota Century Code statute without the ability to change it for up to seven years, unless there's a two-thirds majority vote to repeal it. A popular mobile library made, it, made an end-of-summer stop this evening in West Fargo, giving families a reason to stop by for food, games, and activities, and to celebrate the joy of reading. The Little Red Reading Bus allows people to check out books during the summer, serving as a fun library on wheels. The West Fargo Police and Fire Departments also sent over some special guest readers. It's not just the skill to read, but the will to read. And it just takes a good habit and to keep that going and kids roll right into the school year with less of a lag, less of that summer slide. The Little Red Reading Bus is a project of the West Fargo Educational Foundation. 
Minnesota taste testers are getting a crack at elevating the new McDonald's breakfast sandwich. That's later on Valley News Live at 10. And some competitive races in Minnesota's primary election. We'll have a live report up next.